Good morning, everybody. We obviously have a very beautiful morning, but I'd like to thank you for clicking your way back to the good old Southern IA. And in case if you're wondering if you can win a sticker in this video, you bet you can. My favorite comment within the first 24 hours and you'll win a sticker. And we actually have two stickers to give away in this video. And while I gave away one yesterday and we'll jump to that. So the first sticker to give away today goes from the unexpected dirt work video and that goes to a Gary C and he basically asks, hey, how come you're throwing the topsoil up onto the terrace instead of pushing it back out into the good part of your field? Well, that is correct. That is the proper way to do it is to take that topsoil and that silt and get it back out there in the field and then to build your terrace out of clay or lesser dirt. Uh, but in this situation, I needed that dirt to get up on top of the terrace to build the terrace and without a full fleet of construction equipment there, it would have taken a lot more time to do that. So this was the quick fix. But you are correct. The black dirt needs to go back out in the field and the crappier dirt needs to be in the terrace. Send me an email and I'll send you a sticker. Yesterday we had a pretty decent day. Actually, I hired out one of my contractor buddies with the whole Corona-19 thing going on or COVID-19 thing going on. His work slowed down a little bit. And he earned quite a bit of respect for me yesterday. I called him up, said, hey, I can give you all the hours you want right now if you want to come into work. It's not going to be easy work. And he said, when do you want me there? And he had absolutely no clue whatsoever with this whole trench and pipe laying thing that could be going on. And in his mind, when I said we were going to be putting pipe in the ground, he kind of envisioned horizontal boring. But he did an absolutely fantastic job yesterday and he might be coming back into work today. Uh, hopefully he does show back up for work today. I won't know here for the next couple of hours. And I kind of learned something yesterday is that he asked a lot of questions that I thought were, you know, basic knowledge because I've been around this stuff for so long that I really should probably communicate with you guys as the viewers that probably don't know very much about this at all either. So my task for the day is to try and give you guys the basics of trenching and tiling. I'm no expert by any means, but I know enough to be dangerous. And so we are going to be breaking it down in this video. It's a running water. It is? Oh yeah. Where do you want to go now? Oh, uh, we can take you up to the front. <laughs> Everybody needs a blue healer. This is not a quintessential part of tiling. Driving around in the morning, kind of just chit-chatting. Let's start out with some basic principles of laying pipe. The most basic principle is high to low. That means high pressure to low pressure, as in water will move from high pressure to the low pressure, and water will move from the high ground to the low ground. Water will not go uphill without pressure. So as in having pressure behind the water to push it up the hill. So you want everything that you're like putting in the ground to have a gravity fed to the exit point. Now, how do you get the high pressure and the low pressure in the ground? There are two basic types of pipe. Now granted, sometimes you'll see them with like a sock around the outside of them. If you have very silty or sandy soils, we don't have that issue here. So we don't have socks around the pipe. Uh, but what you have is perforated which perforated means that it has these little slits right there at the end of my thumb to let water go into the pipe because when the pipe gets laid in the ground all the soil that surrounds the pipe out here on the outside of the pipe is high pressure and this is a void in the middle of the pipe which creates a low pressure zone which tries to force the water into the pipe and it can get into the pipe via the perfora perforations on the side the other type of pipe is very simply non-perforated pipe, which means that it does not have those slits in the side of it, which means that water cannot enter the pipe through the sidewalls here. Those are your basics for laying pipe. High ground to low ground, high pressure to low pressure. What do you guys say we start digging?
In my last strange video, someone asked me, why are you taking the pipe up the hill? So that's a great question. Brings us to the next thing that we can talk about. There's really two types of drainage that we can do around here. There is drainage that we call pattern tile, or I've heard it also called systematically drainage. That's where you lay out a grid on a certain centers, like 30 to 60 foot centers, depending upon your soil type. And you put like a smaller diameter pipe that's perforated underneath the ground. Uh, and that takes the excess moisture out of the dirt, controlling your water table, and will stop things from basically drowning out and will keep your air in your soil, help you grow better crops. That is not what we are doing today. Today, we are creating terraces and we're running the pipe for terraces, which will stop surface water from ripping down the hills and moving soil down the hills and causing things to silt in. And so all along the way here, up the hill, we'll stop and put these orange risers that you can see on planter widths. And then we will build dams essentially that will catch the water, let it go down through the risers, which we will talk about in a little bit. And then that will exit the water. Instead of running across the surface of the dirt, taking along topsoil and nutrients. It's just a prevention and a good stewardship practice. start our next run but unfortunately there's a fence in the way so we've got to drop the fence down here take a few t-posts out and then we'll be able to bring the trencher up through Austin's over there undoing it around the t-post and I'm uh, taking all the staples out so as we back down the hill here getting ready to set another double wall we got to give away another sticker. This one comes from the special episode where I went and actually visited a cow-calf operation. It's a pretty awesome episode. You guys should check that out. The sticker goes to, it goes to a Stan Hensley, and he says, those cattle running to get the silage are like people running to get toilet paper. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good little joke there. And I'll tell you what, it was probably just about that close because those cows were nuts for that stuff. put what's called a double wall so it's got two plastic bits at the end it's just structurally more sound because at the end your pipe is shallower so its chance of crushing is greater and if you put a double wall 20 feet up your chances of crushing it is slimmer 
So what this is, is you call them rodent guards, but it's essentially you put it on there, that way a trash panda doesn't decide, hey, what's up this deep dark hole? Go up there, too fat to turn around, get stuck, dies, and then plugs your pipe. So you put these on there, keeps them out. There you guys go. Now you know what the double wall is for. Steve and Austin are down there working on the trencher right now because the chain slipped off. I'm going to hop into the skid steer and do a little bit of backfilling, and we're going to send you guys back to a time lapse to watch it go up the hill. I'm just gonna say part of a car. It's got red paint on it up out of the trench. Hit a bunch of water, just pouring into the trench. Yeah, Austin mentioned I, I, there's no water mains in this field. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <It's bad. laughs> oh. All right, now we see where Bandit learned it from bandit come on come on don't make me go down there come on look at you look at you why let's go and make an effort you're gonna make me come get you aren't you oh, this is fill slop bud it's pure mud let's go oh my gosh that's not good I'm going to Pants too. Well, after that interesting development, back to your regularly scheduled time lapse. another day here Austin's back as well ran into a little bit of an issue yesterday with the memory card on the GoPro I ran out of space trying to film as much as we were but we are in the same situation as we were yesterday where we left off on the third run but we're now on the third run getting ready to put in the first riser on this run so let's pick back up What I'm going to do first here is dig out the side bank so it's safe to be down in the trench. Just discard it to the side. Because if you don't dig out the side banks, the trench could swap in on you and then it pinches you, could hurt you, could kill you. Just not a good day. So we're going to be safe about this and dig out our side bank. Brad that's good enough for this side we're gonna be putting the inlet in on the other side you 
really don't have to go that deep, but that's just the creature comfort for the bigger guys. A little bit wider down there. then on this side is there's a t-post sitting right here that t-post is where the hiccup bottom of the orange riser that comes out of the ground that's the goal where we're going to set that right next to it so we got to dig out this side and then get the pipe exposed doing is he's crawling down in there with uh, a tile probe and he can shove it into the ground now we'll pull it out now that's how far away from the dirt I am it looks like about eight inches or so so I can clear off a little bit more topsoil there and then he can expose the pipe on the bucket and we can make this connection. The first drop of the week. <laughs> Think the brown clay sucks? Great clay. split the main, insert a Y so we can do the offset. After we get this to this point here, you got to crumb it back in or bed it back in. Just knock some dirt into the hole, give it some support. That way the pipe doesn't move when you backfill. Backfill is self-explanatory as in you backfill the dirt. Well guys, it's starting to rain. We've got one connection that we have to fix before 
too long where we've cut a previous pipe it's right down there Austin, did you learn anything here today? No, oh, yeah, I learned so much I'll forget. How many different vehicles have you driven that you've never driven? See. You didn't ever driven a backhoe. You driven a backhoe. Yeah. Been a lot. You have never driven a skid steer like that. So that's a new one. That's a new one. Never driven an excavator. Never. Uh, have you ever driven a goer? Yes. Oh, uh, so we can't take that one on there. Uh, the never driven a John Deere or the Kubota. So. Hey, four new pieces of equipment. That's not too bad. We can go hop in the dozer before we leave. <laughs> but he was excellent help here. Uh, I didn't scare him off yet. So we're going to make this connection. Thanks for hanging out with us in the mud here. We've still got a lot more work to do. I guess I've kind of decided to pull the trigger on spending some money on some plastic pipe going in the ground. <laughs> you know, what's money do in your pocket? No good pipe in the ground drains your dirt so <laughs> boss is like i <"Aye>, crazy people <laughs> so anyways thanks again guys we'll be checking back here throughout the time when we're building these deals so don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe austin you got any words of wisdom no. don't work with your farmer friends no. tile goes into bathrooms and kitchens <laughs> <laughs> right, see you guys How many country songs have been written about rain that we can <laughs> Chop with rain. Stand on that edge. Yeah. That was like original YouTube. Chop with rain. You never seen chocolate rain? Nice look at how nice that is i wish my whole field were like this stuff man look at that it was the same beat and everything as by you were drinking it's like, i'm gonna buy your best